Welcome to the Sunday's edition of Vegas and Jim Market Report, March 22nd, 2020. And we have a great watch list for you today. MEDS, GHSI, Walmart, JNUG, Boeing, and Zoom. Miss Vegas, good morning to you. One good morning to everybody. I know everyone's pretty much quarantined and staying home because uh, everyone's got to be safe here. So definitely uh, not really going out unless you're going to a drive through to pick up some food or quickly running to the grocery store to pick up some essentials and uh, pretty much uh, homebound. So hopefully you, uh, you know, take advantage of uh, trying to stay positive and spend time with your family. So just to give some updates on what's happening. So we should hear from uh, President Trump again today at 11 o'clock with regards to uh, what's happening with the corona status. I know that there's commentary that the U.S. Treasury Secretary um, Steve Mnuchin says that the coronavirus relief plan is calling for a, a four trillion dollars. Uh, that is huge money. And uh, also saw a tweet today from President Trump mentioning that uh, Ford, GM, and Tesla are being given the go-ahead to make ventilators and other metal products really fast. Um, and Elon Musk was talking yesterday to um, Medtronic's CEO, and they were looking to have some sort of collaboration. So really nice to see these companies trying to come together and see how they can help the country. Uh, so this is great. Um, but, you know, we still need to hear the details on the stimulus plan, and that's what everyone's kind of waiting for. The markets are suffering uh, immensely, and uh, especially in these large cap stocks. And so, um, you know, I don't think the damage is over just yet. And uh, looks like we're going to be taking some hits again, especially as the news that comes out uh, doesn't, you know, it just keeps getting tougher and tougher to control what's happening. So, you know, you just got to really trade what's in front of you. So we're just going to talk about now. MEDS, so MEDS is uh, MEDS, they're under, that's a ticker, but uh, it's under the Trexade group, and, uh, you know, this company here, they, you know, they do different things, they were located out in Florida, and um, one of the things that they do, or what they're involved in, is uh, the telemedicine, and uh, you can actually... Uh, I don't know if you, if you ever need their services, but uh, let me just see here. Hold on, Jim, just for one second. I'm going to delay opening the document. Okay, so they have also the healthcare platform. They have a membership services. And uh, what they do, you pay $19.95 a month. You have the option of three visits a month, as well as free prescription delivery. And a lot of people are going to want to use that. So they do provide telehealth services and also prescription ordering. They also do uh, teleconferences that are apparently, you know, routinely conducted with their smart devices. <laughs> and really, it's just a good way for patients to access a certified doctor from the comfort of your home, especially right now when you're told not to leave and nobody really wants to go to the doctors. As a matter of fact, uh, my mom had an appointment and her doctor actually called her and said, you know, we're going to do the consultation over the phone. So, I mean, even they don't even want you coming into the offices. So, so I think that was, you know, we're going to see, I think, telehealth become more important. I think these are um, helping to avoid you from having to go to urgent care facilities, hospital rooms. And uh, hopefully now, you know, this can avoid people spreading the coronavirus by having to rush off and they can actually use um, some sort of teleconferencing. And we're seeing that this has become more and more um, a way for people to speak and consult with a doctor rather than having to go. And I think remote visits are going to be quite productive also. Uh, if someone actually needs someone to come, uh, then they will, I'm sure, dispatch a doctor. Now, I do want to mention here in Ontario... Uh, they do have telemedicine as well. So, I mean, if you actually think you have the virus, they've set up a hotline and you dial 811 from your phone and you're connected with a practitioner 
who then will assess you over the phone if they feel that you need to be assessed further based on what you're describing they will then dispatch you to have someone come see you that can then test you for corona so i mean that's quite advanced here in ontario at the moment and uh, i think that's quite interesting that um this is obviously uh seems to be working and it's avoiding people from having to go to clinics and obviously spread the germ so um jim let's hear about your thoughts on meds i mean it had a beautiful run uh the other day on friday we did trade it a lot of people swing trading the stock because we love the volume and uh the stock did open at four dollars and 68 cents had a high of day of 767 closed at 625 the volume was 532,400. and uh, you know what swing trading the stock because i still think there's room for the stock to go higher uh based on the demand and so jim let's hear your thoughts on this particular stock remember this one also did get halted as well volatility halt and then also had a bit of a pullback so you know keep that in mind when you are considering to trade a position like this um any kind of theme stocks like corona based stocks and telehealth stocks are really hot so be careful when you trade them in uh, during the day uh protect yourself put stop losses because you just don't want all of a sudden to have a halt and then a knife so just be careful out there if you do consider trading any of these stocks so yeah. jim what are your thoughts on meds well, we did have a nice little pullback on it, like she said, and we did have a little bottom down here at 422, and she's bounced on up. So I'm going to pull up this 20-day chart. I'm going to have a little look at it. It did close at after hours at 990, had an after-hour pop. <coughs> Excuse me. We did have a nice run on this, almost, oh, 43%, but actually, you know, it bounced off this 422 area. So it looks to me like more than, more than that. It, good 100 percent bounce and we do talk a lot about the ten dollar breakout so if this does break up break past that 980 and hits the ten dollar mark we could have some new buyers coming in and this kind of reminds me a little bit of zoom which we'll talk about later but you know life's going to change for a lot of people a lot of people are going to start working from home and i think this could be a catalyst to really start motivating this company i have a support level here at eight dollars if it pulls back to that eight dollars that's going to be a pretty strong buy if it fails that mark we could pull back to this lower support level right here right around the 702 area so that's going to be your second strong strong buy for a low low support and i'll turn that into a red line and we'll get that done real fast here bam you know it's that easy so we're, here we go we've got a low low support right here at 702 we got that first support at eight bucks if it pulls back you know break out in the morning we could probably see a pull back in the morning but if she does exceed to break the 890 and go up to the 980 and get up to that ten dollar mark we could see another breakout on this trade and that's going to be meds keep a good eye on it be cautious play with caution and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be ghsi little penny stock yes so guardian health sciences i mean we have talked about this stock previously and uh this is one of those stocks that has ran has pulled back you know there aren't they are involved in the ocular nutrition they also um they were also you know at one time let me just see here they did get an extension by the way also from nasdaq to regain their compliance and that was given to them on march 19 a couple days ago uh, because you know the stock um, you know they have to they've been granted another 180 days until September 14th to gain compliance of the minimum one dollar price per share so um, you know GHSI is one of those stocks that has that momentum that has had that action and um, also GHSI if you take a look at the volume I mean look at that volume on Friday like 20.1 million Thursday 20 22.25 i mean this has ran quite nicely in the past i mean the back in february it went up all the way to 74 cents um it closed on friday at 47.5 so definitely keep a watch on this one because this could definitely have another continuation many people by the way swing trading the stock i mean we had the stock back at 33 cents um and took a, had a nice run with it so there is still an opportunity here to keep a watch on the stock even for day trade 
not a lot of people want to swing trade things. Everyone has their own trading style and that's okay. But definitely keep this on watch, on your watch list. You may want to consider it potentially for a day trade and looking to see if this has a continuation this coming week. So Jim, your thoughts on the GHSI chart? Yeah, I've got my, I'm in one of the, you know, one of the masters of the extended trend line method. And I'm pulling up my 2018 trend lines on this chart right now. It goes all the way back to 2018. And that's what I was calling it out on Friday when we were in the room. We do have a resistance level of 4903 that needs to break. If we can, and this is a year, uh, 20 day chart. And let me pull up the yearly, just to have a real good kind of just a gander at it. You know, it's too hard to read, but we got other resistances up here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark them on in here. We've got one right there at around 69, 73, and 79, which meets that 200 uh, EMA on the yearly daily chart. So let's pull up the 20 day now, go back to it. That's going to be a good strong resistance level, that last one that I mentioned. But we do have a cup and handle that broke out. We had a pull back on Thursday. It hit a low down here, right at 34.53. And then we had that bounce to the resistance level, which is going to be a hard resistance to break at 4903. If we can do that, we'll be fine. But it's definitely got some social media attention. So let's go ahead and pull up the daily three minute. We've got a low support down here right around the 30, 39, about 40 cent area. If it does pull back to that 40 cents, that's where I want to see it hold. I like to see the resistance break, like I said, at 49, but I'm going to adjust that channel. To 4987 so we have this 49 and I'm gonna go ahead and color that in because that's going to be like the little window that we need to break between that 49 and 4987 area and I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in there so pull back support I don't want to see it go no lower than 40 maybe 3964 it can drop down here to this 3881 area as you see that happened pre-market but she ran up most of the day. I was watching the volume on this. Called a little pullback right when it hit the high up here to this support level of 45. And it bounced right off of it. These, like I said, are go back to all the way to 2018. That's how accurate these trend lines can be. And I mentioned it many times. So the resistance that we need to break is going to be that 4903 to 4987. And I'm going to pull up the 20 day and give you a few more resistance levels. And probably after this, I'll need to start clearing this chart up. But I think we can take it to 55. And if we can get past 55, we got a new resistance up here at 63 cents. And that's going to be a very hard one to break. So, and have a good luck with GHSI. Next one we're going to talk about, everybody knows, everybody has one in their town. And that's going to be Walmart. Yes, and Walmart, you know, they're going to be hiring 10,000 workers. They're going to introduce other measures with regards to the coronavirus. You know, um, Walmart Canada is going to hire 10,000 more employees, but I believe in the U.S. Um, they're going to hire a lot more. Um, they did, uh, they're going to hire 150,000 temporary workers because the demand has been soaring, as you can appreciate, uh, with regards to the supplies that people are taking from the store. And people just trying to stock up, really, because they just don't want to have to go to the store regularly. You know, sometimes people are buying two weeks worth of stuff, uh, especially when you have a big family. Um, you know, you might go shopping every week. And in this case, some people are just going shopping for two weeks worth because they just don't know and they want to just be precautious. Um, so, you know, Walmart also uh, mentioned on a Friday that they are going to issue a special bonus to their employees. Uh, so I don't have the details on what that bonus is, but I think that's great. I love seeing what Walmart is doing for their employees. And uh, you know what? I really like the Walmart actual stock. Um, I think Walmart's you know, one of those stocks right now that actually is doing great. And uh, that's because people are having to go there and shop. So. You can see that uh, the stock did close to 113.97, over 18.4 million shares traded. It had a very, very nice run as well um, on March 18. It ran to 128.08. Um, it had you know, a pullback, obviously, on Friday. 
And, um, you know, we have to wait and see and keep a watch on this kind of stock, especially with Walmart, because Walmart to me is one of those stocks that does have the pullback, but because of everyone having to go there and shop and with all this positive news that they're doing with hiring, um, I think is positive in general for the stock. So I think definitely um, keep Walmart on your watch list and uh, may want to just day trade it if the opportunity presents itself. And um, I'm definitely really liking Walmart also longer term uh, because I think they're going to have a strong earnings report for sure. Um, so definitely Walmart to me looks like it's in their accumulation at these levels and uh, looking to hold it longer term, uh, you know, into earnings as well. I think they're going to do really well. So definitely keep Walmart on your watch list, either for day trade, for swing trades, however you like to trade them. And uh, Jim, let's hear about Walmart because it's had quite a amazing, quite nice little run over the last week. Sure enough. I drew a little uh, pivot point channel here where I think we're at a PP. And that's a pivot point between the 113 and 116, 113.16 to 116.76 area. So that's where she's kind of been consolidating at, pulling back and, and breaking out. We did have a nice breakout last week to 128.08 with a resistance at 126.86. And I've got me a little trend line I'm going to draw in right here. Well, let's adjust this down to this spot here. So, you know, Walmart's definitely a cocooning stock because you need your supplies. You can also order your stuff online and get it delivered to you, which is very beneficial. Plus, they have where you can just call it in and you can just drive up there and they'll wheel it out to your car which is going to be very convenient in, in what the environment we're living in right now. So we have a, I think we're going to definitely start to move up on this next week because this is definitely a, a, a cocooning play. And we've got different resistances and they are opening up. For, and I think Miss Vegas mentioned that they're having, going to have an hour a day for the elderly. So that's, you know, beneficial and I appreciate that with Walmart. I used to work at Walmart back in the day and so we've got a pivot point area right here this channel of 114.93 that's the resistance that we need to break we might have a little lower support down here right around the 109 area which will make it a real strong buy i'm going to turn that into a red line just in case it does pull back on there you know it depends on how the market comes out you know if we open down a thousand points this might pull back and then have a great bounce up throughout the day but you got to follow the trend and right now we're at the pivot point area in this channel. And that could be a bounce from 113 to 116 with a resistance to break right around this 119, 120 area. And if we can break that resistance level, we'll get up into this new channel that we had. We did have lower highs throughout the week. And, you know, that was kind of, and then we had that big sell-off on Friday. And I think everything kind of sold off on Friday because you just don't know what's going to happen over the weekend. But let's look at this stock as maybe a low support at 109.80 for a strong buy, a resistance to break at 116.70 with that first support right here at 113.16. Then you have that solid resistance up right up here, right around the 120. And if it can break, it's going to be hard to break that 120, but it, and it might consolidate and pull back a little bit to maybe the support here at 116, 117, but then bounce right back up and have a double top breakout from 120 up into this other channel of resistance level and that's between 120 and 128. I have wide spreads on this because that's what you see on the chart. I mean you can have a 107 to 116 bounce in a day. You could have a drop from 119 to 113. You could have a, a, a run from maybe down here at we had the week before from 103 all the way up to 128. So definitely this is one to keep on. Keep If the trend is moving either way, that's the trend you want to follow. And we're definitely bullish on Walmart. The next one we're going to discuss is going to be a gold stock, and that's called JNUG that's had a wonderful pullback, and we think we might see a bottom play here in Miss Vegas. JNUG. JNUG's obviously a gold ETF, and uh, people did really well trading this on, you know, a couple days back. We're talking... You know, if you go back to March 13, last Friday, not the one that just passed, I mean, people swing traded that overnight 
into the weekend. And then, you know, with the following Monday, March 16, the stock ran to uh, 894 the next day on Tuesday, 1369. So, I mean, it's had a beautiful run. And it pulled back here on Friday, closed at 332. So, you know, people keep a watch on this because, you know, these stocks that pull back sometimes have an opportunity to obviously reverse and run again. So people are looking to trade this from a reversal perspective as well. And the fact that, you know, gold becomes a commodity for people um, when the markets are pulling back. So, uh, you know, people have swing traded the stock. And, um, you know, if you look back, I mean, what was this priced at at one time? I mean, this was not the price it's at. Um, so it closed at 332, over 83 million shares uh, traded on that. That's massive. That is actually the highest volume I've personally seen in months. Um, the volume the, the day before Thursday was actually a much higher, sorry, 104,000, but between Thursday, Friday, major, major, major uh, volume. And not surprising if this actually is being accumulated. Um, I have some shares on this as a swing trade. But, you know, there's probably people accumulating a lot bigger size than myself uh, and keeping it as a swing trade. So definitely keep this on watch. And Jim, what are your thoughts on that chart? Because it has had a beautiful run. Now it's pulled back. And, you know, if it does run again, like what are some levels we can see and where do you see the support on the stock? Yeah. Well, last Tuesday, I called a pullback on this trade. I had a couple support levels down here. At a, I had one support between the 529 and the 603 area and I'm just pulling up a reference that I posted in the room last week on Tuesday and we had a second support down here at the low 416 to 483 area and I'm going to pull up the chart now on JNUG and we'll take a little look at this she was I mean this is up was it 107 20 days ago 107 20 days ago and she's pulled all the way back to 330. So if we get any kind of, you know, this is one that I think we did hit a bottom at. It's a double bottom. And that double bottom was right in here. Let me see if I can pull this here. I mean, it wasn't too much lower. It was right down here at, at let me get this candle right here. I can't see it. So I'm going to put that right, right there around 350 area. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. Let's look at that real fast. Back at the 20 day, and I'm going to see if I see anything. Yeah, I'm just saying we're at a bottom right now, so we're going to pull up the daily one minute. You see how she kind of consolidated into close, had to pull back away to 330, but I have a 350 support, and that's right about where we closed at after hours on Friday. So we've got a couple resistance levels. If it does turn, I think it will turn. It is an ETF, so they're a little more risky in this time of climate, as you can tell on the 20-day chart from 107 all the way down to 330. So let's see if we can get this thing up to about 381. If we can break that 381 to 389 area, you're going to have another resistance right up here at 416 to 430. It all depends on the trend and, and how she runs. I do believe we did hit a bottom, that low support, 350 with a target of resistance up here right around the 432 area if we can break the 432 we've got another channel to, to get up into and that's going to be all the way up to 529 and that's going to be JNUG but this is one that you have to keep on with watch if we do start to see a recovery you can have real nice gains on this trade here all alone the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Boeing well I got to tell you, you guys, you know, I'm sure you all know Boeing's just so sad to see these prices. I mean, they've now suspended the dividends. The CEO um, is going to forego his paycheck because, uh, you know, um, he until the end of the year, by the way. So he's ref he's not going to take a paycheck for the rest of the year. And you know what? He shouldn't. He's rich, right? So, um, you know, the Boeing is is pursuing a sixty billion dollar U.S. government aid to help them with their manufacturing supply chain. They are feeling the damage, um, you know, with regards to what's happening with the coronavirus, and obviously, 
aside from the virus, you know, they still had those issues with the 737 MAX with the fatal crashes they had earlier this year. So, you know, Boeing's just really, really in a lot of trouble and it definitely is going to have to get a its own separate bailout money separate from those other airlines that need bailout money. Um, obviously, uh, talks on TV, you know, that if they do get this bailout money, that it's certainly not to be for executive pay. It's certainly not to be used for, um, you know, stock buyback or anything like that. And also there'll have to be some, you know, wouldn't be surprised to see the um, them taking a stake in actual Boeing shares so that eventually when the company shapes up, they can, you know, get that money back in time. However, I do want to just comment what, you know, the damage that's been done here to the stock. I mean, you know, today we're March 22nd. And if you were to go back even as as far as, let's just say a month ago, Feb 21st, to let's say today's, like to Friday's day, which was March 20th, exactly basically one month ago, the stock was $330.38 on February 21st. And on Friday, March 20, we closed at $95 and one penny. So this is some serious, serious damage here. And, um, you know, it's just so sad to see this, actually. Uh, so, Jim, what, do we, what can we see on Boeing? Because I just don't see this turning around right away unless we hear, guess what? You're getting your bailout. And then, you know, I could see all of a sudden some surge in the stock. But we haven't heard that yet. We know things are being worked on. But I think with the, what they're doing at the, you know, federal level and at the Senate, they're obviously working to give the details on uh, packages for actually the people of America. I think they will obviously give the details regarding the corporations, but I think the priority is the people. But in the meantime, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Boeing because until we hear something, uh, which is not going to be right away, I think they're first working to, to update the people and help the people, which I think is the important is more important. Um, but what are your thoughts on Boeing? Because uh, I know you've been looking at this and quite shocked with what's been happening. Oh, yeah. Uh, Boeing, to me, is is probably the vital one that needs to keep running because it is inter uh, due to our natural, uh, national defense. We do need Boeing to keep going, so it will get bailed out. But Miss Vegas is certainly right about the people need to come first, put the money in their pocket, and then start bailing out big corporations. But because if you don't have the money to fly, if you don't have the money to do this or that, you, you still need money in people's pockets to survive. And that's going to be the number one. But we did have a little consolidated area here in the past week. It started on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from $90, $90.57, all 89, well, you know, 89 was the low, up to around this 108 area. So there is room for scalping this trade. I do believe that we did find a little period that was consolidation. But I do have two other supports that it can pull back to, and they are pretty steep. And I'm going to pull up the yearly chart. And actually, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm looking at in case, you know, you're new to trading or, or I'm going all the way back 20 years to look at these time frames. So I would be looking back. For support levels on any trade that that has um, and Boeing needs capital so they're not you know they're hurting for sure but I'm going back 20 years and looking for on a monthly chart and looking for places of support as you can see we've pulled all the way back to 2000 to two seven two I mean to 2007 levels where we had that high and then we had that other dip back and then we had the big crash of 2008 and I called this crash way in advance back in 2006, 2005. I said, you know, if a certain person gets elected, we're going to see a crash. And that's what, exactly what we saw. And we did have a double bottom on that area. And that's all the way down to $28. But we did pull back to a very critical support level. And that was right here at the $100 level. And you can see it as we had that peak right here back in 2006. 
So we're, we're bound that far. This stock can go back to this other support level here right around the 79 area, the $80 area. And that's where we had the crash and then we had the, had the ascending triangle right in here for about three years where she pulled back to that $80, 8060 area. That's going to be a real strong buy if it pulls back this coming week. You know, Monday's a new day. It's always different than Friday. You know, the news comes out. And we're going to find out where this baby's going to go. So let's pull up the 20 day. That's a 20 year chart. So if if you're not finding supports on a five year, a 10 year, go all the way back to 20 years and you can see a better vision of what you're looking at. So let's go ahead and go to the 20 day, one hour. If you see the last three days, we had that hard sell off. I mean, it was up here at 173 just two weeks ago. 20 days ago, we were at 324. And now we broke down to $89. I want to see it hold that $90 area. If not, we're going to hit that 80 60 That's another $10 drop. And if that critical area doesn't hold, you'll see it down here at 68 52 And there's going to be opportunities to buy Boeing. This is one you want to keep on your watch list and follow the trend. As you see, the 20-day trend has been from $324 all the way down to $89 with three-day consolidated area. So the channel we need to look at, and I'll pull it up here on the five-day, five-minute, is going to be up to that $100 level, up right about right in this area here. It can run up to 108 and find a real hard resistance, and you'll see a sell-off from there back to the pivot point area of right around the $109.90. But your support area is going to be right down here at 90.57, maybe for a buy, with your first support, which is right here at 94.38. So I gave you the first, the last strong buy or the dip, maybe to 80.60. If it keeps in this channel at 89 and 108, which I want to see for about another week or two, that'll be great. That'll mean, that'll tell us that we've hit a bottom. We've hit a bottom because we've had a 300% sell off on it in 20 days. And that's going to be Boeing resistance 108. Strong support down here, right about $90. If that doesn't hold and it dips below that $89, you can see, I guarantee it, you'll see $80.60. And the next one we're going to talk about is one that I've been watching a lot and everybody in the room has been watching. And it's one that is a cocooning stock. And it's one that will change the world for the next 10 to 20 years. And that's going to be Zoom. Yes. And so Zoom, I mean, it has become the darling of the remote workers during the Corona crisis. I mean, you know, Zoom has picked up new users in dozens of countries in the past few weeks. It's gained a lot of traction on the FaceTime. Um, the stock price is soaring. Uh, so it is one of those stocks like a Walmart that, you know, it's making money and they're going to have good earnings. Uh, what I like about Zoom it's actually uh, one of the top ranking uh, Apple apps. Uh, it's obviously free to use. You know, they did have a time limit that you could Zoom with someone for up to 40 minutes for free. And if you do that and you want to go longer, you have to buy a package. But what they're doing right now for schools and some other organizations, even for some universities, some uh, yoga instructions, uh, yoga instructors, sorry, um, they're actually not let they're letting you actually go longer than 40 minutes for free because they just want to help people. So, you know, Eric Wan has been, um, you know, definitely applauded for helping schools and organizations during the crisis. Uh, as I mentioned, they did remove the 40 minute call limit for free accounts for thousands of schools in the U.S. and also other countries. So, you know, we could see that uh, this is quite the the way for people to stay in touch you'll notice a lot of broadcasters on tv um i don't really know if they're using zoom but if they are i mean there are a lot of them are broadcasting from home and uh this is fantastic video engineering uh just to make sure that uh you know people can still um do conferences and we could still communicate like a facetime so uh, Jim, what are your thoughts on Zoom? It's doing really well, zooming along, and uh, <laughs> I know you keep talking about the stock every single day. So yep. let's hear what you think about the chart. Oh, uh, I love I love the idea of Zoom. Uh, everybody knows about Join Me and and uh, Zoom. I know a lot of people that go to church that are using this now for their their church gospel. 
every Sunday. Everybody can zoom in and still have their church in their home. It's a cocooning stock, and I think this will really uh, calibrate to a great company even after we get through with the coronavirus because you'll see a lot. You'll see a, America will change, and so will the world change in all their business affairs, and I just think it's a wonderful company right now. I had a re call to support down here right around the 105 area last week, and we've run all the way from 105 to 135. It's a $30 bounce in a week. I do believe that that 118 was the, the area that we had to break. As you can tell, we did pull back to that once we did break it. And it just, to me, this stock, and I, then I have another channel of support right in here that I drew up last Thursday. And then into Friday, and we did touch down on that right here on Friday. And I'll magnify this up and show you what I'm kind of talking about. I called out a support level after it broke out to the 135. I said, don't be surprised if this pulls back to my support channel that I drew up in here on Friday to 126.73 and 127.61. You could see where I drew it up. I stopped it right here. And later on, oh, about an hour and a half later, after that big breakout to 135, we hit right there. I mean, just right on top of that line that I had at 127.61. So that's going to be your solid support level. And I'm still going to keep that support level. But I'm going to have two other support levels that you're going to want to look at. The first one's going to be right here at 131.14. And I'm going to adjust this 127.61 all the way up here to 129.67 and I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a red line and I'm serious about that pullback right there if we do hit that 127, 129.67 area we can get up to this first support again to 131.14 you'll see a little congestion right here maybe it might just pull back to this 131 and break up and break that resistance level and we're going to draw a couple more lines of resistance levels. And one of them is going to be right here at 133, 133.37, all the way up to 133.77 with a long red up here right around the 134.74. So let's look at the five day one more. Let's look at the uh, 20 day one more time. You see I'm getting a little tight up here. So we're going to squeeze that resistance level. That we need to break is going to be that 134.73 and I'm going to draw that in a red line because I'm looking at the 20 day. I'm kind of looking at a bigger picture right now. I'm going to change that to a 3. Okay. So let's pull up the daily. See if we can find something here where I think support level is. Strong buy at 126.73 to 127.61. Your support buy if it pulls back to 129.67. With a resistance to break up here in this upper channel between 134.73 and 135.98, I think this can run a lot higher up to the $150 area, and that's going to be my next strong resistance. It'll be something that we haven't seen yet, and let's just keep a good eye on Zoom. This is going to be probably a strong cocooning stock for the next month or so, and it's going to have some trends. Follow the trend. Don't get stuck in it. You feel like you've had enough profit? Take it. And that's it for the market report, Miss Vegas. Also remember, subscribe and hit that like button. It means a lot to us. That keeps us going. And share these videos with anybody you like. We sure would appreciate that. Subscribe. That's that's very important to us, Miss Vegas. Well, you know what? Uh, just keep doing your social distancing. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are home right now. So if you are not trading and uh, you want to learn about trading or see what's going on in the markets, I mean, you're free to come check out our room. We have a free trial all the time. So now that you're home, I mean, that's a, actually a really good way to learn and um, just come and watch. I mean, you don't have to be actually trading. You could be paper trading. Uh, you could learn about what's going on in the market. So please feel free that during your downtime right now, you're actually home from your job. Uh, you could, you know, ch definitely come by. So the link is in our YouTube channel at the bottom, or you can visit our website and get the link there. So we wish everyone to stay safe and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Still waiting to hear, I'm sure, a lot more updates on in the media. And uh, tomorrow is going to be, obviously, a new day. And, uh, you know, hard to always predict what is the market going to show you. I mean, we all, everyone's like, oh, it's going to crash, it's going to pull back. 
every day is a new day. Certain stocks will pull back more and certain new ones will reverse up. So it just depends what news is, comes out, what's going on. So the best thing is just trade what's in front of you or you know what? Cash is a position a lot of people are not wanting to trade. And I know some people bargain shopped, I think a week or two ago, and um, they're still in a way bargaining and buying some more bargains here. So some people view it as opportunity. So it just depends how you view stocks. If you have the money to do things, then that's great. It's to your advantage in, in uh, a lot of cases with some of these stocks that have pulled back. So um, I wish everyone a great weekend. See you tomorrow. Have a great evening and spend time with your family. Take care, everyone. This is I Love Stock Sunday's report. We wish you the best. Um, love your family and love your friends. I love stocks.